What did you do? I had sex with other girls. I did everything. If you have not seen these, this video in its entirety, it has gone viral. It depicts two people, a man and a woman, who recently have gone through a really rough breakup. There was some infidelity on the man's part and just really some uh, for lack of better words, just some really trifling actions on the man's part. So the woman is understandably so really hurt, really still broken, really still in this place of obvious sort of longing for some sort of validation or at least resolution, just very open and raw and vulnerable. I mean, this woman is literally the most beautiful crier I have ever seen. And the guy just kind of comes across as very unbothered by it all. The f first time I saw this, even though I know the reaction on social media has been really intense, the first thing I thought about was how triggering this had to be for so many women. Because if we're just to be real honest for ourselves, just for a moment, very few of us make it out of our 20s, very few of us make it past 25 without being in this woman's shoes. Maybe it's not that deep. I can't say that I ever rolled up on someone and they were in bed and they told me to, with another woman, they told me to leave and then I came back. Like, I, it's, I've never had it that bad. But I do know what it's like to be in an emotionally lopsided relationship. I've been in several. Um, and I do know what it's like to grow beyond that and want more. I forgave you. Why? I started thinking about intimacy and how beautiful it can be when two people come together and they both have good intentions for each other. So let's not even talk about commitment. Let's not even talk about a ring. Let's not even talk about any of that stuff. Just two people coming together, they see each other, and they just have really good intentions for each other, and sort of the beautiful connection that that's capable of creating, right? When just you give and you receive at the same time. And most of the most significant relationships in our lives, that's what happens, right? With your parents, you love and you feel love in return. With your friends, you love and you feel love in return. When you have a baby, you love and that baby loves you in return. And you forget that the act of loving and the act of emotionally investing requires energy. It is like running, it is like swimming, it is like dancing, it is like anything else that requires energy. It is an act. Emotion is not just a state of being. To emote, to feel for someone else is an energy and you give that energy and when it's coming from a good place it's beautiful when it's not coming from a good place it's not and what happens i think is sometimes we enter these relationships and we give and we give not just our bodies because that's what we think about oh i get you know i slept whatever not just our bodies we give our emotion we give our heart we give that beautiful energy the most beautiful thing we can give someone right and if you don't get in return you end up at a deficit. I mean, it's, it's quite, it's, it's simple. Like, you know, it's like going to the grocery store and paying your money and walking away without your groceries. Like you end up at a deficit. And so there are relationships I think take place in our life where we walk away overdrawn. We walk away at an emotional deficit. And the dangerous thing is that oftentimes we're on empty, we're actually in the red and then we go into other relationships hoping that people will deposit into us. But what, in, what needs to happen is we have to stop and we have to heal and we have to use self-care and whatever it takes to heal ourselves before we can go back into a relationship full and ready to give and hopefully get in return. And what I saw when I looked at this girl was a girl who had given and there was nothing left to get. She did not receive and she was literally like an emotional debt. If you would go to that measure to, I don't, to find whatever, why, why wouldn't you just leave? I don't know, I think I was like stupid. There's this part where he's like, you know, if you were so curious as to what I was doing, like, why didn't you leave? 
and that's everybody's question was like, well, why didn't you leave, right? And there's a lot to be said for validation. And whenever I talk about relationships, I can't really talk about relationships outside of the context of our society, which teaches women in so many ways, from very fairy tales to beauty culture, to modern day courtship, to seek validation that no matter what you do in the world, no matter what you accomplish, like you are not, you have not reached the apex of your life until some man has come along and validated you, right? And so a lot of times I think we show up on dates wanting to be liked rather than wanting to really learn. And as I got older, I realized that I just had an overarching desire to see and be seen for, for me to see someone clearly, but also wanting them to see me clearly. And in order for that to happen, you have to have tremendous self-awareness because we all have these itches that we want to be scratched. And it changes depending on who we are. Some of us need to, be, need to feel beautiful, some of us need to feel powerful. Some of us need to feel smart. Some of us need to feel successful. Some of us need to feel important. And when the person comes along who can make you feel that way, it's really not about love, it's about validation. And sometimes when somebody gives you just a little bit of what you really, really want, like they scratch that itch just a little bit and then take it away, you find yourself yearning to have that itch scratched again. In some ways, that's actually what seduction is. Um, of course, seduction can be a beautiful thing when someone comes along and they offer you that pleasure and they offer you it from a, a really positive space, but it can also be a manipulative thing when someone comes along and they can sense what you need, right? And they give you just enough, just enough bait to keep you, you know, to keep you swimming after, right? And that's where this girl was. Like, it's, I don't doubt that she loved him, but when you ask like, well, why did you stay? It was because that need for validation is so, so deep. And the only thing you can do about it is to understand what those deep itches, those deep yearnings, those hidden addictions are. It's self-awareness, it's knowing. I know personally, like, if you tell me I'm beautiful and fabulous, I really like to hear that. So I know for me, that's a hidden addiction. So, so when I show up on a date and a guy is saying all this stuff, it kind of, it's nice to hear, but I, because I know that, you know, that's kind of music to my ears, I can almost tune it out and continue to try to see the guy for who he really is and let the actions speak for themselves because romance is beautiful, romance is wonderful. But at the end of the day, romance is not intimacy. Romance is about social acceptance. Romance is about the glamor of love. It is all the good things. It is the feels. It is being told what you want to hear. You know, it is movie sex scenes. It's that. But romance isn't really about true vulnerability, true authenticity, like showing up as you are and really seeing the other person as they are. We met in school, we met in college, um, we met in class, and you really didn't like me. No, I didn't like you. The only way to really see who's sitting across from you is to number one, have your own self-awareness to know who you are, right? And to understand what your own vulnerabilities, your own potential insecurities are. And once you've kind of got that down, you know, then you can properly like take those rose colored glasses off and really have a look see at who's across from you. Because I promise you, before it gets so serious that a man is, you walk in on a man with another woman and he tells you to leave, <laughs> before it gets to that point, there are warning signs that this man is not honoring you. This man is not showing up for you. This man is not rising to the occasion. So why give the best of yourself? Why make that big a withdrawal from who you are when you're not getting any return on the investment with the exception of validation, which is cheap? It had more to do with me just not being able to commit. Why not? Because I didn't, at the time, I really, I didn't want to. 
So I guess my final notes on that video, my what a video. First off, I, I, I don't, I don't think I could do that. So let me just, I will say this. I do give that girl tremendous credit for, for doing that, for facing off and for having that, you know, at least that little bit of closure because that, that would be really hard. Um, but I think my final thing is to, to be honest, right? In this video, what was so beautiful to me was this woman's vulnerability. But vulnerability isn't just tears. Vulnerability is just walking in your truth the whole way. And vulnerability is accepting the possibility of rejection and knowing that's okay because if it doesn't work out with this person, there's somebody else, right? Rejection is a kind of a good thing. You know, when it doesn't work out with somebody that's not meant to work out with, that means you don't have to invest in another relationship that you're not going to get any return on. So be honest, walk in your truth, trust your intuition and honor men. And when I say honor men, I mean, we honor men by giving our energy, by giving our bodies, by giving our attention, honor men who actually rise to feel their potential and men who act in ways that are in accordance with your own personal values and what you truly, truly want rather than accepting the promise of potential and just praying that one day things will suddenly change because I won't say life is short, but I'll say at the end of the day, like it makes sense. You always want a return of your investment. Nobody wants to be walking around here emotionally bankrupt.